Hey everybody, this is Jason Ritchie and uh, your Moon Cat coming at you for another harmonica lesson here on YouTube. Uh, I've been having uh, a lot of gigs lately, so I apologize that I haven't been back making more lessons, but here we go. Today's lesson is about using the three draw half step bend and why that's such an important note on the harmonica to have good. Um, I always get in trouble for talking too much with some of my fan base here. They'll be like, you're, you're not playing enough. Stop name dropping and talking about stuff. And like, uh, uh, you know, here's why I do that. Like, uh, you know, say, say I got like three items here, you know, and, uh, and I say, hey, and, and you say, hey, pass me that thing over there, Jason, you know, and I go, hey, this one. And you say, no, 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 the other thing. You mean this one? No, the other thing. Well, it helps if we establish a name so that you can say, hey, pass me the middle one, and then I know what to give you, right? Okay, so a lot of times, like, when I'm telling you about stuff at the beginning, it's not that I'm, like, trying to show off or it's, like, ego thing, which I get accused of often <laughs> in the comment section, not by most of you, but by a small portion. It's that I'm really just trying to teach like the what why I know how to do this stuff which is more important that you understand why I'm doing it than you just you know be able to replicate it note for note because then you can create it your way which is more important than creating it my way because I might not have the best way right so this three draw half step bend it has a few names <clears throat> in regular music we call it the three draw half step bend right or a single bend, um, you know, and then you got the double bend and then the triple bend, right? You got three natural, three single bend. Right? So there's three bends on that three draw, including the unbent one, which just makes four, four notes. And that's all inhale, okay, on three. So that's the hole on the harmonica that has the most bending ability. But maybe one of the most important notes is that single first single bend. One of the things that I think most guys that I'm like listening to that are just starting to play could really benefit a ton from is just learning how to play that note. That's why I'm always teaching the pentatonic scale. So, you know, you get that two draw double bend. And then you mix that. And it gives the harmonica a much darker, more direct blues sound than, say, which is using the two blow and the three natural. Which is great for country and country blues and rural blues and zydeco and shit like that. But like, if you're just trying to play some funk or some dark blues or even some rock and roll. So that's that three draw half step bend. Now it's a tricky note to get me, you know, especially on the higher harps. You know, when you get up to F and E flat. I'm using a C harmonica. It's a Suzuki Manji. Um, that uh, with a Tom Halachek blue moon comb that I put some cats on, okay? <laughs> so that's what's up with that. So uh, <clears throat> it's a brass comb, it's very pretty. Anyway, yeah. So like, um, when I'm doing it, I, I kind of like bend it, like even though I'm lip pursing it. <laughs> You know, just putting my lips in a smaller position instead of tongue blocking. Instead of doing that, like, I kind I, 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 even though I'm lip pursing it, I'm kind of bending it as if I was tongue block bending it. Meaning, like, I'm using the back of my throat kind of, like, right around here. So I'm not really using my tongue too much to pull the bend like I normally would, like, on a... Where my tongue is kind of... Pulling back. I'm not doing that. I'm just kind of... Instead of, I'm really using my throat. I find I get a more accurate bend that way. So we call it the 
flat third. We call it the blue third. And uh, the blue third is kind of like in between flat third and a major third, which is just three draws. So it's kind of a sharp flat third. And it's also called the minor third. All these names have different connotations. Like it's a flat third when we're in a major key and the note is just flatted. That generally implies that I'm like putting a little blues in. Okay. It's a minor third when we're in a minor key because that's the only third that should be played in a minor key unless you really, really know what you're doing. And, you know, you don't even want to worry about that. <clears throat> Just want to play that note flatted all the time because that note defines the key of being minor. That's how important this three draw half step bend is in a minor key is the note is actually called a minor third because it makes the key minor. That note in a chord, in a minor, you know, triad, um, you know, a G minor triad on a C harp, that makes that note minor as opposed to... So that making it that much darker does that. So let's talk about a couple of different ways to use it. <clears throat> okay, like, first of all, on the one chord, like say we're playing over a G major blues. On the one chord, I can leave it unbent. Okay, and that will highlight the first arpeggio, or the first major triad. So I'm just going to leave it unbent for that. And then on the four chord, I'm going to bend it down. Which, you know, it's not important that you know this, but it implies the seven of the four chord. So it, it would be highlighting, in this case, a C7 chord. So it, it's going to give you some blues. Let me play it for you. So I'm, I'm on YouTube and I, I have like a G blues play along here. So I'll play it unbent on the one and then bend it on the four. Now let's see if you can hear how much blues it adds. <laughs> progression just on three draw so on one chord I'm leaving it unbent on the four chord I'm bending it a half step illustrating the seven of the four it gives me some blues sound then on the five chord I'm double bending it which it gives me the five of the five I wasn't even meaning to teach you that today it just kind of happened so let's do it again <laughs> you can see how cool getting to use that note is you know and the, the big thing about it is is it's like knowing when not to use it you know like laying off of it you know it's I guess maybe not even knowing when not to use it it's just knowing when to use it you know it's an easier way to say it so let's go to a different tune let's go to like a G minor blues here okay so I'm waiting for this commercial that done I'm watching some ants get killed I don't really like bugs, but I feel bad for them. Okay. Oh man, they're making art out of dead bugs. That's like some Texas Chainsaw Massacre type shit. Okay, here we go. Okay, 
Okay, so right away, so like, I'm playing it bent because it's a G minor blues. So that means whenever I hear that word minor, if I want to play cross harp, like I don't have to go grab a minor key harp. And I don't have to go to third position, okay? I can play minor key blues in cross harp. But in order to do that, I have to keep the three draw bent down. Let me show you what it sounds like with it unbent, okay? So maybe you can hear, okay? So I'm going to play wrong. And I'm actually going to be in the wrong key. Even though I have a C harp and the band is in G, I'm going to be in the wrong key because the band is actually in G minor, okay? And I'm on a C harp. So I'm playing a G major over minor. You can always play minor over major, but you cannot play major over minor. I mean, you can, but this is what it sounds like. Like rough that is like I don't know it's rough it's rough let's just listen to, to what it sounds like when I keep it bent here we go bent here's unbent right so this is wrong So this is how important it is. So if you can just keep that note bent, you can play some kick-ass blues. Minor blues. I'll just play two notes. Two draw and three draw half step bent. better bent it's just works the other way simply does not work so you know this is an important lesson next time you're at the jam and somebody calls something in G minor don't go searching for a minor tuned Lee Oscar you know not that there's anything wrong with that that you, know, you can play great chords on it but you don't need it you don't need it anymore you, you know you just keep that note bent in your playing in a minor key you know if you're an overblower you know you overblow six instead of hitting, and, and you don't hit seven draw. Those are the same two notes. You know, that six overblow is the same as the three draw half step bend. Anyway, this is a short lesson, um, but a really important one. The bottom line, bend your three, your three draws, either when all the time if you're playing minor, or try using it on the four chord in a major blues. All right, I will see you next time. I'm gonna go out with the other tune I was playing on and just play a little jazzy blues for you.